Today, I'm going to share to you about basics or some of the basics of parliamentary procedures. Now, one important thing that you should know is this thing, which is what we call the gavel. The gavel is actually a symbol of order. Take note, order. And the one who wields the gavel is actually the presiding officer. So what is the role of the presiding officer? The presiding officer ensures that the meeting goes harmoniously, that no one is being unruly, and if there is someone unruly, the presiding officer calls the sergeant of arms to take that unruly member out from the meeting. That is the job of the presiding officer and make sure that the procedure of the approval is correct and the legislation is valid. So, how does it go? In the start of the meeting, the gavel is being banged three times. One, two, three, and the presiding officer says, this meeting is now called to order. Or it could be also, the presiding officer says first, this meeting calls to order and bangs three times, one, two, three. And the start of the meeting. And in the middle of the meeting, sometimes the presiding officer bangs the gavel, sometimes one. In times of the item is being approved or the legislative measure is approved. And sometimes he bangs to order when everybody is unruly or there is a much heated argument among members. He bangs order. However, a sensitive bangs of three counts, one, two, three, when someone is really, really unruly. And that's a time once he does that three times, that unruly member shall be taken out from the meeting by the sergeant of arms. The presiding officer calls the sergeant of arms, Mr. Sergeant of arms, member X is unruly, take him out from this meeting. So those are the things that should be remembered as a presiding officer. However, in my discussion today, it's much more about the basics of its passage. No passage will be approved without its language, the motion and second rule, that every passage must be moved. For example, using this, let us say our class is to handle a national convention and we are to facilitate it and we are the one trying to organize. For example, in a, in a kind of a council meeting. So, a member proposes that there is a need of a stipend for our international speaker, Mr. Juan Dilvillar from Thailand. So the proponent says, Mr. Chairman, and the, the presiding officer acknowledged the member, what is your pleasure? So the member now states his motion, Mr. Chairman, I move for allocating 50,000 pesos for stipend of our international speaker from Thailand, Juan del Villar. But take note, if a motion is not being seconded, then the proposal is outrightly killed, outright in that, uh, in that moment. However, if a member likes it, then it must be put into second. Then the other colleague will say, Mr. Chairman, I'm seconding the motion for the approval of the 50,000 pesos allocation as type and for our international speaker from Thailand. However, if there is no objection, it is outrightly approved. But if someone objects, then the presiding officer calls for the division of the house for the majority to vote. If that happens and the majority 
favors the motion for the 50,000 allocation as type N, then the motion will be banged by the presiding officer as for the approval and that makes Mr. Juan Del Villar 50,000 richer comes our guest speaker in the national convention. So I hope that you learn from this video that in every passage, there must be motion and second. We uh, use the motion and second rule. So others who are so interested about this, I am open. So you can email me or chat me if you're so interested for further knowledge about the basics of parliamentary procedure. Thank you.